Hey everyone, welcome to another training video in SC200 Microsoft Security Operations Analyst series. In this training video, I will cover the module on Deploy the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Environment. The key module objectives are create a Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Environment, onboard devices to be monitored by Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, and finally, configure Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Environment settings. My name is Navneet Kumar, and I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer. If you are new to this channel, please do subscribe it for future updates. Without any further ado, let's get started. The Defender for Endpoint operates in the Microsoft Azure data centers in the European Union, United Kingdom, or the United States. The customer's data collected by the service may be stored in the uh, geolocation of the tenant as identified during the provisioning. Or if the Defender for Endpoint uses another Microsoft online service to process the data like the geolocation as defined by the data storage rules of that other online service, the data can be stored in the target region. The data storage location is determined by the geolocation of the tenant during the provisioning as I mentioned. The data retention is there for 180 days, whereas for the advanced hunting investigations, the investigation data is accessible via the query for the period of 30 days only. Enable the preview features. You can use the features in preview. The default setting is on and can be managed later on as well. In case you are looking for the data sovereignty and where the data will be stored by the Defender for Endpoint, I will put a reference link in the description of this video. Do visit to that link for more details. Well, when it comes to onboard the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint with the new features, Onboarding the Defender for Endpoint by configuring the devices with the latest features like the Advanced Threat Protection, Endpoint Detection and Response, the EDR capabilities and the integrated XDR capabilities to enhance the security and the visibility becomes important. To onboard this Defender for Endpoint with the new features, all you need to do is you need to go to the security microsoft.com portal, the XTR portal, where from you can select the endpoint, Defender for Endpoint, and turn on the Microsoft 365 Defender features. The screenshot shows you that you turn on the new features on this, and it takes some time to prepare your workspace to get the data ready and the connections are established. When it comes to onboard the devices, you will need to go to the onboarding section of the Defender for Endpoint, where you will see the option of onboarding or offboarding. In onboarding, you have the options of selection of different operating systems, be it Windows or non-Windows operating systems. You can download the uh, package that you can run. In the earlier video, I discussed that for onboarding the endpoints, we can use different solutions, be it the MDM solutions like the Microsoft Intune that the devices are enrolled to Microsoft Intune and can be automatically onboarded to the Defender for Endpoint or can be through the Microsoft Configuration Manager uh, which was formerly known as MECM, Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager or prior to that SECM, System Center Configuration Manager. If you are using on-prem configuration then that can be the option. You also can onboard them with the help of group policies or the scripts. Later in the lab exercises of this learning path, you will see onboarding of the Windows device and performing some simulated attacks, the risks, and then remediating them with the help of Defender for Endpoint. Well, if I talk about the compatible operating systems for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, these can be Windows, Mac operating system, Linux distributions, Android or iOS devices. These operating systems allow the Defender for Endpoint to provide the comprehensive threat protection across the wide range of devices in the organization's network. 
Managing the access is controlled with the help of role-based access control. The Defender 4 endpoint uses this Defender XDR RBAC for managing or defining this control. This allows you to manage and control the access based on the user's roles assigned to them. This system enables you to set the granular permissions. It specifies that which role can view the specific data or the device, access certain endpoints or the features and perform the actions such as investigations, remediation or the policy changes. This RPAC model enhances the security by ensuring that only authorized personnel can access the sensitive endpoint information and take specific actions. This reduces the risk of unauthorized access or actions within the security environment. Next, we will see that what are some of the permissions that are available. The permissions we have are for viewing the data, which grants access to view the alerts, device information, security data, but does not allow modifications or remediation actions. Whereas the other role that we have is active remediation action that allows the users to perform the direct remediation actions on the devices like the isolation of a device, quarantining the files or running the antivirus scan. We also can assign the alert investigation role which provides the permissions to investigate the security alerts, incident details you can view and analyze the alerts that are generated by Defender 4 endpoint. Manage portal system settings is another role that enables users to configure the settings and preferences of the Defender 4 endpoint portal. This includes the notifications, integrations and the organizational preferences. Manage security settings in security center grants the ability to modify the security policies, configurations and the system settings in the Defender security center, including the device policies and the protection settings. The live response capability allows the users to access the live responses features for the real time investigation and the interaction with the compromised devices to conduct the forensic analysis and remediate the threats. In a nutshell, the role based access control ensures that authorized personnel have the required access. Talking about configuring the device groups. It is a collection of devices that we want to define to scope the users based on their roles to limit their operations to that particular device group. The de device groups in the Defender for Endpoint allow you to organize the devices for more granular control and the access management. We can have certain benefits of creating the device groups like limiting the access. We can assign the device groups to specific enter ID user groups with the rollback uh, RBAC roles assigned to them and uh, we can restrict access to the alerts and the data or ensure that only authorized users can view or manage the particular devices. So it can act as a scope of delegation for these users. We can also define the auto remediation settings where we can configure the different auto remediation policies for the each device group to apply. These are actually customized actions for isolating the devices, running the scans and this depends on the device requirement. Assign remediation levels. We can define and apply the specific remediation actions for different device groups during the automated investigation. It ensures that the right response based on the device group characteristics like their device platform has been used are applied. Filter the devices in investigation. During the investigation, use the group filter to narrow down the device list to only those within the selected device group. This helps in streamlining the analysis and the response process. As part of the process of creating the device group, you set the automated remediation levels for that group. As I mentioned earlier, specify the matching rules that determine which device group belongs to the group based on the device name, domain, tags, or the operating system platform. Select the enter ID user groups that should have access to that device group. Rank the device group related relative to other groups after it is created. Well, this brings to the end of this module on onboarding the devices. Later in the lab 
demonstration, you will see how to onboard and remediate the risks on the endpoints. The next video will be on implementing Windows security enhancements. Stay tuned and do subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed it yet. Thank you.